Coming up on iPads in the Classroom, must-have back-to-school apps. Hi, my name is Guy Trainin and this is iPads in the Classroom from TechEdge and today I'm talking about back to school apps. So I go back to some apps and I always at the beginning of the year think about what are the apps I use the most as an instructor, as a teacher, and what are the apps that I want everybody to have on their iPads and that includes mostly teachers but to a certain degree especially with older students that would apply as well. The first one I want to talk about is actually Twitter. Uh, Twitter is very simple, everybody knows about Twitter. If you don't, you should. What is important to know, especially for teachers and high, school, uh, high schools in general, I would argue, is that Twitter is a great way to get a back channel uh, feedback from your students. Again, if you're working with students who are at an age where they can do that and you have permission to do that, so I'm encouraging you to try and get it. And that way you can have students really giving you feedback or giving each other feedback or even discussing things on a, a back channel and not just in class out loud. And what we find often is that students that do that are uh, different than the ones who tend to speak up in class. So this is a way to engage a different group of students than the students who usually participate in class. Now when we go beyond that, Twitter is also a great way to do professional development for teachers and what you are looking for are chats that are available on Twitter that are teacher chats. Those are always positive, very supportive and very informative. So try to join one of those chats and if you are looking for chats and you're not sure where to get them, the website for Cyberman uh, is one of those great places where you have a lot of chats available. So if you go online and you go to Cyberman and you find his website and he's got a lot of resources uh, in general, if you go to his Twitter uh, area it will have a link to all the chats that are available and the hashtags that allow you to follow specific topics. So the official Twitter educational chat schedule allows you to actually see the chats where they are and if you, you can even use your time zone to see exactly when they start and put them on your calendar. I, it's very worthwhile to participate and just get a sense of what's happening on a chat. And when I say participate, you want to start with a just going and listening or reading the posts, but then I encourage you to try and participate even if just a little bit. All the guides are available, so Twitter is one of those apps that you want to have on your iPad as soon as you can. YouTube is another one of those apps, uh, partially because you can find everything on YouTube, partially because we're on YouTube, so and you, we know you want to watch us, but also because you, uh, YouTube has tremendous resources both for students to watch video and for teachers. So if you want to learn about something, you want to uh, get a 10 minute or 15 minute introduction to an idea, or if you want your students to watch videos as part of what they do when they're not in class, this is a great idea. And there are some fantastic video series that are out there. Of course, Tech Edge is one, one such series, but you've got Minute Physics if you're teaching science, Crash Course if you're teaching science uh, and or uh, social studies. They've got great resources. Smithsonian Channel has a lot. So you can find the channels that are appropriate for your students. You want to find things that are fairly short. They are great as an introduction to topics and enrichment for students so they get another way to access that information. So I would argue YouTube is one of those things you want. The next thing you want is probably Google Drive. And if you don't have Google Drive, and if you don't work in Google Drive, then you may not want it. But I would argue that Drive is one of those assets that really keeps on giving. If you're working in Google Classroom, for example, with your students, as an LMS or a learning management system, you definitely want to work in Google Drive because that allows you to access what your students are sending in on your iPad. 
of course, it'll work across devices. And so you can see that I have my Google Drive and my Google Drive has a lot of folders and a lot of documents in it. And it allows me to access them, comment on them or change them. And so Google Drive is a great way to manage the, your shared documents that are on the cloud. If you're using other cloud services, that's fine as well. What I love, what I love about Google Drive is that it allows me access across devices just using my login and password. And it allows me to edit and others to edit at the same time documents of different kinds and keep them stored in that form so we're not exchanging documents and having to track which version of a document we're working on now. It's just live and Google Docs and uh, the other apps that Google have created allows you also to go back in time and to see the changes that have been made. So lots of good things can happen if you have Google Drive. The last two I want to talk about, the first one is Flipboard. I've talked about Flipboard many times, but I want to talk about it again. Flipboard is a way to get a stream of news, ideas, and posts, and you can connect it to your social media. So I connect it to my Twitter feed. It's a great example. You can follow specific hashtags. You can follow other things you're interested in. What I love about it is it brings a visual feed that includes photos, that includes everything that you want in the beginning of the story. So you're not just getting the 140 characters, but you get a lot more than that. And it's one place where you can see a lot. So they've got their cover stories. I use Twitter, as you can see, and Gadget, The Economist as a source for news, uh, YouTube and other things. So you get really a varied feed that you can scroll through as a magazine. And that's a great, great app. If you want to know more about it, look at our previous uh, posts about Flipboard. And the last one I want to talk about is Overdrive. Overdrive is a way to connect your iPad to your library resources. So if you have a library card and your library system like mine in Lincoln Public Schools, uh, sorry, in Lincoln, uh, Nebraska, the public libraries, uh, you have a card what you can do is you can go on the city library and you can borrow books, digital books, or manage your account. Now, managing your account, you can do anywhere online. What I love about this is you can borrow books, download them into your Kindle app, or just read it in your browser, and those are available to you. So if you need to borrow books for schools or if you want to read for fun, Overdrive is a great app to have at the beginning of the year, setting it all up, and then you're free to look for a, let's say classic literature on ebooks and you can see you can borrow it you can sample it and then you can decide if you want it sometimes you have to wait because the library has only a, a number of licenses available for e-download but it is a great way to get to reading and if you want to read something immediately and they have it available you can start reading within three minutes of finding it on overdrive so today we talked about a few apps that will help you start the school year and it's something that I want every teacher to have and many of the students, if at all possible. And I'll see you next time on iPads in the Classroom.